Hi, I'm Alexander Adamov. I'm a uh, uh, founder of the research laboratory in Guard Security Lab. Actually, I am from the academia. Uh, I've been teaching uh, malware analysis for 15 years in my home university in Ukraine and in Sweden, uh, where I work with my graduated students on malware research and uh, not only. And today I would like to talk about um, quite interesting, sophisticated uh, fileless techniques used uh, initially by Sandworm a year ago and uh, recently uh, by Tula. And actually, this is uh, the third time I am going to talk about Sandworm. Sandworm is a, a Russian state-sponsored um, group, which is attributed to GRU, military unit, it's a military int intelligence, and it was um, quite uh, heavily engaged into the military operations um, during the uh, full-scale invasion, like last year. And as you can see, uh, one report was devoted to not pay attack, uh, in 2017, and another report was about a chain of wipers uh, used to destroy critical infrastructure in Ukraine uh, in 2022. And actually, uh, it all started when I had been analyzing um, Whispergate, uh, one of the, one of the um, cyber kill chain for file wiper. And I've noticed that uh, it used um, the technique, fileless technique, uh, that uh, has never been used before. So, but let's uh, uh, make uh, one step back and uh, uh, talk about, okay, what uh, file threats uh, in general, because this is uh, how I usually approach my students. Um, so we try to give definition to all the concepts that we're going to use in, uh, during the presentation. So this is uh, the taxonomy published by uh, Microsoft. Um, they published uh, the extended report like a month ago, uh, which, uh, uh, was references in my abstract, but unfortunately they deleted um, just, I don't know, some, some time before the conference, and I had to change the reference to the older publication uh, in 2018, where like uh, the same uh, taxonomy was presented. And as you can see, Microsoft proposes to split uh, all file threats, uh, which is, covers quite a big amount of different uh, cyber attacks, into th uh, three uh, major categories, depending on how files are engaged in the attack. So as you can see, uh, type one is a pure fileless when uh, there is no need to use any files, no connections to file system. And this is uh, a preliminary um, backdoors implants in hardware and firmware. Uh, type two and type three, they require some um, communication and uh, interaction with the file system. Uh, of course, type two is just uh, to some extent and type three uh, is he heavily reliant. And, example, uh, and examples of fileless techniques that I'm going to present today uh, will be mostly from type two and uh, type three. Also, um, Microsoft um, split the, for all fileless threads into categories based on the implementation. And if we talk about, for example, Sandworm and Turla attacks, they cover all possible execution and injection classes of fileless threads. Uh, specifically, uh, this file list techniques is about reflect, reflective code loading. Uh, so the goal of reflective code loading is uh, uh, in a stealthy way load executable code, the payload, into the memory, and it's part of the defensive agent tactic. Uh, you can find it in Mitra attack matrix. Uh, what, what's the difference between the gen, uh, general uh, process injection is that uh, reflective code injection is made to uh, its own process if uh, general process injection usually uh, made to other processes, like uh, it can be system processes or uh, the child processes uh, started from the uh, current, current instance. And just to remind you about syndrome operations, uh, so these are the most prominent and mostly targeting critical infrastructure in Ukraine. As I mentioned, they are uh, attributed to GRU, one of the military units of military in uh, intelligence group. And going back to the previous uh, last year presentation, uh, Whispergate operation. So there were like a two uh, stages. Uh, the first stage was, uh, the first part of the attack was a big defacement, after which uh, more than 70 government websites were defaced. It happened on uh, January 13. And the second part of the attack that followed this is uh, uh, attacks uh, of wipers. Wipers uh, is a destructive uh, type of malware that is used to uh, delete files, delete files content, or uh, content on the disk. And specifically, 
Uh, today, we will talk about this uh, cyber, second cyber kill chain to uh, that was used to deliver file wiper. File wiper is used to modify the content in the files, not on the disk. And I created this uh, process flow, uh, execution flow diagram, where you can see how it, how it was executed, highlighting these fileless techniques. Uh, as you can see, at the very top, there is a uh, shown stage um, uh, of the of a st step, step of the execution, and you can see uh, if the step, if the files used in the step is on disk or in the memory. So it all started with um, executable stage 2.exe, the original name you can see in brackets. Uh, of course, it was uh, on, on, on the disk, and it was started with administrative privileges that indicate that the attacker that already um, compromised uh, Windows domain controller. Uh, then they uh, contacted Discord CDN uh, to download attachment, which was uh, presented as a JPEG, and this JPEG was downloaded, decoded, and executed uh, as a .NET, as, as a uh, runtime assembly, because this is this was uh, .NET DLL, and then uh, one of the re uh, uh, resources in this .NET, .NET DLL is used to uh, to be injected uh, using the process Halloween into install util. Install util is a uh, .NET framework uh, tool, which was also dropped from the downloaded uh, fake JPEG file. So this is how JPEG file looks like. As you can see, if you're familiar with the uh, P structure, so you might recognize at the very bottom of this JPEG file, this is a reversed uh, P header. Actually, uh, MZ header, MS DOS stop. And then uh, once, once it decoded in the memory, so it's not stored on the disk, that, that's the point of the file is attack to minimize the footprint. Uh, it was loaded to the memory, and as you can see, uh, there is no reference to the image on, on disk. That's the indication of fileless attack. So this DLL was executed, but there is no reference, uh, there is no any pass to executable on the disk. So how, how the attackers uh, managed to do that? So they uh, used um, like legitimate, uh, abused legitimate um, technology, uh, runtime assembly. And uh, so first, uh, you need to create instance of runtime assembly class, and then you need to call assembly.load. That's where it all started. Uh, this loads the, your assembly, which can be .NET DLL, into the memory, and uh, .NET automatically constructs a dynamic uh, references uh, to, to this object that can be later uh, used to call the methods within this assembly. As you can see, the second uh, function reflect uh, uh, the second call the picture reflect item actually calls uh, the method name. And uh, that's, that's how it uh, looks. This is uh, step number three, call, call of the uh, reflect item. And voila, we are inside of uh, filelessly loaded .NET DLL, and you can see the name of the method is the same as was used in reflect item method. So it's pretty much like a standard uh, .NET uh, technology, for front time assembly, but it uh, helps a lot uh, to, to load the uh, payload into the memory in a fileless way without needing to create shell code uh, and uh, uh, do some extra operations. So everything's done is .NET. And, uh, um, but why I actually uh, decided to uh, submit this talk is that uh, months ago, uh, our CERT UA published a report where they um, explained and found um, a new attack uh, from Turla. Uh, Turla is also a Russian uh, state-sponsored attack, but it's not, I, I couldn't find to which uh, branch of intelligence services it's attributed. Uh, supposedly, based on the targets, uh, they, they support uh, foreign intelligence service operations. And um, in this report, I found that uh, Turla actually uses the same runtime assembly, but in a little bit different way, more aligned on a, a scripting technology. The a point for a Turla campaign was to deliver two backdoors that are typically used by Turla, Capybar and Kazoar. And these were uh, delivered successfully, su supposedly successfully delivered uh, through um, 
spare phishing uh, campaign. This was, by the way, reported by Microsoft Threat Intelligence team with the reference to the report uh, uh, on CERT UA website. Uh, this is a spare phishing email, which is a simple uh, electricity bill. And the target organization, uh, and uh, the target is the U uh, Ukrainian defense sector. Uh, and these backdoor were used, were intended to use to steal the uh, communications, the messaging in Signal, uh, specifically uh, desktop uh, Windows version of the Signal, because even though in Ukraine, like uh, probably Telegram is the most popular messenger, uh, still because of some connections with Russia, uh, military and special services prefer using Signal. I don't know. How, how many people in this room use Signal? Okay. <laughs> so probably uh, there, is, there is some uh, background for that and rationale. So um, this is, this is uh, the example of, um, uh, this is a, a screenshot of JavaScript published in the UA report. Uh, this uh, JavaScript was uh, downloaded from one of the uh, CNC servers and it used to um, execute uh, Capybar, deploy and execute Capybar exploit. And if you uh, take a look at the bottom, in JavaScript, there is such a line, uh, dynamic invoke, create instant, dot create instant and another call. So this, this one line, uh, um, does the same as, as I showed before. So it loads uh, .NET runtime assembly, but from JavaScript. Also, it's interesting, uh, interesting uh, fact from this attack that uh, the attackers, they uh, set a CNC server uh, compromising Microsoft Exchange server. And to do that, they use .mov file, which are used to uh, uh, deploy desired state configuration, which is uh, typically used by, by DevOps engineers to configure the server. And in this uh, mov file, uh, there is a PowerShell, uh, and, uh, which uh, executes the uh, .NET backdoor. As you can see again, system.reflectionAssembly, the same way they load .NET uh, backdoor into the memory. Uh, another backdoor uh, is loaded pretty much in the similar way. Again, we can see JavaScript, and we can see two methods, uh, dynamic invoke and create instance. As, as we've seen before in the previous slides, uh, the backdoor code, the .NET DLL, uh, has been serialized and delivered, for example, as a base64 here and here. Green, green code, it's a .NET uh, backdoor. So um, some uh, conclusions uh, out of uh, analysis of these two attacks. So first is um, uh, we see the abuse of uh, legitimate .NET, .NET runtime assembly uh, technology, which is used to uh, load runtime assembly. In our, in our case, there were like a .NET backdoors. Um, so now probably more, we will see more and more attacks uh, in this, in this um, using this technology because it's much easier than, 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 than deploying shell codes in the memory. Uh, in, in general, .NET technology uh, are more and more used uh, by, uh, uh, by state-sponsored attacks, specifically uh, in, the, in the attacks uh, from um, Russian uh, state-sponsored groups. Uh, probably because if you target um, Windows machine, so it's uh, easier to, to use uh, already popular technology platform like, such as .NET to, to create the backdoors. Uh, also, um, what, what made me think that um, there is uh, one team or there is a knowledge exchange between the developers of uh, malware for those two state-sponsored groups. Uh, is, is uh, the fact that um, they, they all use uh, the same technique, uh, runtime assembly loading. And uh, also we, um, like probably um, by the end of the uh, previous year, there were reports where uh, it was stated that um, malware, some hacking tools and malware 
uh, were developed by a private company. This private company is called um, Scientific Te Technical Center Vulcan. It's uh, uh, located in the suburb of uh, Moscow, uh, Hinkin. And uh, so they, they create malware. Specifically, uh, it was um, stated in the report that uh, they created Miniduke for foreign intelligence service, and they also created some um, reconnaissance tool, a social networking uh, monitoring tool for FSB for internal um, uh, intelligence service uh, in Russia. So I, I, I have an assumption that uh, malware, currently malware, uh, is created by some um, contractors, like uh, private companies, and uh, probably they share the same uh, technique, the same knowledge about cyber attacks, and maybe, maybe reuse uh, the code. And uh, the last question um, that uh, came from this, from this research is uh, how well are we protected against file threats? Of course, uh, as we saw in the, in the very beginning, um, in uh, Microsoft taxonomy, it's uh, like a big variety of different uh, cyber attacks, starting from MBR vipers uh, and ending with uh, macroses in Office documents. These are all file uh, different types of file attacks. Uh, of course, uh, we do not consider like uh, advanced cases where we have backdoor embedded in firmware and uh, in, uh, um, in 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 hardware, uh, but. Uh, in my opinion, we will see more and more fileless uh, techniques uh, utilized in uh, state-sponsored attacks, and, but not only, in the future. And the question is how AV industry is ready to address. And uh, if, if you go to Microsoft website, so you probably find some uh, mitigation recommendations and uh, some statements that uh, some of the technologies like uh, AMC, anti-malware scanning interface, behavior-based uh, detection, uh, machine learning that help to, um, to detect file threat or at least uh, mitigate the risk of infection uh, of file threats. Uh, but if, if uh, you go to um, MITRE, uh, Enterprise Matrix, and find this uh, reflective code loading technique, the description for this technique specifically um, uh, the detection uh, DS0009, which is, uh, provides mitigation for, for this uh, uh, assembly load technique, uh, you will see the note that uh, it's, it's, it's uh, quite uh, hard, it's quite challenging to detect such type of attacks. And the only mitigation, the only recommendation MITRE provided is uh, to monitor uh, this runtime assembly dot load method call in the .NET files. But it's obvious if you uh, use any um, .NET obfuscator such as isfuscator so you can obfuscate the method's name and this will uh, help to bypass uh, security defense of, of, of the uh, target machine. Specifically, uh, we talk about uh, Windows-based uh, system. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention and please questions.